And what I'm going to do is apply a negative voltage here. Now the negative voltage is going to go through the resistor, go through this, go through this LED, keep going and find its way to its positive here. And the positive is connected right here. And if we touch them, boom, the LED turns on. Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be building a custom made LED race wire. Now you won't be like, what the hell is LED race wire? Well, I'm actually going to show you how it works and explain to you what it is. You see the arms here? Those are the LED race wires. What, it, what it's doing is it's simulating the wire, but with LEDs on it. So I'm just going to show you how it works here. So when I give power, they'll all boot up. So they all booted up now. Now, whatever motor gets more power, uh, the LED will get brighter. So you can see that here. Oh. So, like right now, I'm rolling, I'm pitching, and you, it's really nice in real life. The camera here is not going to do it justice. So, that is LED race wire. Now, there's two types. There's ones with LEDs and ones without LEDs here, for example, like these. These, you could just break them off, and you could put them on the arm. Now, I've released a previous video of how to create the normal ones, and I've given the files straight to my Patreons, which is just click a link, it opens the editor, and they could put whatever logo, and also change the size, the length, or the width, depending on the type of drone they need. I made mine pretty generic, which fits most of the frames I have in the shop, and probably fit most of the frames out there, but you might need something special. That's where the files would actually come in handy. Or the video, if you don't want to join my Patreon, you can just follow along that tutorial. However, recently I've done the LED version tutorial. However, I've removed it because I made a mistake. And I'm going to redo that one to show you how to create the PCB. But currently what you can do is you can buy them uh, with the links down below on PCB way. So you can just click it and buy them. And they come in something called panels. So this is a panel right here. Um, and this is this is a nice way to maximize your money's worth. So for you know you get so much more for a lot cheaper like this. And whenever you want some, you just break them off like that. And uh, there we go. So now we have one. I'm gonna take it under the bench and show you how we're gonna build this one and put the LEDs on it. So each of these will cost you like 40 cents basically. Uh, so for like 40 bucks, you get like I think 100. I think yeah, 100 or something like that. Yeah, I think 100. And uh, for 100 LEDs. Uh, that go on here it's like two dollars and the resistors are basically like a dollar or two before we continue on building some people might not know the benefits of a led race wire well there's some benefits and also some drawbacks now one of the biggest benefits is it protects motor wires and you might be like okay well how does that work well so for example if you're flying and you crash and the propeller bent down and it went like this and it struck your motor wires now usually that would either cut a motor wire or pull the motor wire and rip the ESC pad, which is something you don't want, or even pull the motor wire from within the motor and you're gonna have to replace the motor or an ESC, or just resolder your motor wires. And this is where this, these come in handy. They actually protect that. And also another great advantage is if you have really short motor wires and a four in one ESC, you can just extend it really easily because extending motors wires is an absolute nightmare if you've never done that before. It's something that I personally despise and hate because it takes so much time to do. So these are the benefits. Drawbacks is you get less power to the motor than you would without them. But I don't know to what extent, and um, it you know it, it could be little, it could be basically none. Uh, I'll have to do testing on that. But in theory, theoretically speaking, it does decrease the overall current going to the motor. But at the same time, in theory, that would actually increase the lifespan of the motor and doesn't really hinder your performance that much. I mean, I've never felt any performance degradation. However, if you're racing, I don't think I would put that because you'd want to maximize every single uh, watt or yeah, every single amp and watt you could possibly get to those motors. Now, all these files are available to my Patreon with just a simple click. It opens them up and you can modify the size, how many LEDs you want on them, or just the normal one, just change the logo. And you can even remove the, the logo on the back here. And as you can tell, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. Um, I designed it and I get them for free. And actually, if you buy stuff from me on my secret shop, I actually put these now inside uh, your packages. So I give you four of these and four of these until I run out. And then the next project will be in those secret shop packages. So yeah, also Patreon have secret access to my secret shop. So go check it out. Click the link, you'll know more. All right, so now I'm hoping you kind of know what an LED race wire is or what a race wire is. Um, it is just a basically a PCB wire. And uh, now let's go ahead and build them. So I'm gonna show you everything you're gonna need to build them. And um, it's gonna be really easy and it's gonna be really fun. And I'll show you how they work. So 
Let's jump to the bench. Okay, so this is the interesting part, and we're going to be building our first LED race wire. Now, there's a couple things you're going to need. You're going to need a hot air gun, some tweezers, some solder paste, because this will make our life a lot easier. You don't need to use this, but it will just make everything so much easier, and you'll see. And some toothpicks here, and as well as the LEDs. Now, this right here is 100 of them for like two bucks I paid for them. And the tweezers, you get like four nice ones for two bucks, but I'm pretty sure most of you probably have tweezers. This is like two, three dollars. And I always have some of these laying around. You'll see what they're used for. And we're also going to need resistors, which are 0805 in size. And we're going to need the 51 ohm resistance one. So right here. And again, I'll have some of these linked down below for you. So each board is going to need one resistor, which is going to go right here. And then it's going to need six LEDs. So let's go ahead and get started. And just a little side note, you'd get the boards like this if you were to purchase the ones in the link down below if you didn't want to make your own. And once you break it up, it'll still have some leftover PCB traces just like this right here. And what you want to do is just, you, you know, you can grab it and then just bend it down or up and it'll just come right off just like that. So there we go. And they break off really, really nicely. Really, really nice. Here we had a little strand, which we could just remove. And that's how every PCB is made on the planet, basically. All right, so the first step, we're going to get our solder paste here. Now, this is basically solder in a paste form, and it has a very low uh, melting temperature. Not only that, it also has flux in it, so it's going to make things so much easier. Now, I highly recommend a syringe. I'll have a link to a syringe and also this down below. Um, I already had some of this, so yeah, it's just going to be good. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some to the resistor side here. So we're just going to put a little here. You don't want to put too much, just a tiny bit, and I'll show you. And usually if you get a stencil, it's really nice if you have a stencil. It just makes things so much better. There we go. And um, that, I think that's going to be good. Maybe I just want to add just a tad more on this side here. And when you heat this up, it'll lock into place, and you'll see that right now. So I'm very happy, very satisfied with this. Usually you might want to do all of them together at once. It'd probably be better, but we're going to do one at a time just to show you how it's going to be. So here's my 51 ohm resistor right in the tweezers here. I'm going to line it into place, make sure it's good. And this looks pretty good here. And you're going to see what happens once we apply heat. It'll just sink in to its own place. Now I'm going to set up my hot air gun to 350 degrees Celsius. That's probably overkill, but that's fine. And you don't want the air blowing too hard because you don't want these components to fly off. Now what I'll do first, while the hot air gun also heats up to temperature, I'll be preheating the board. This is very useful. Well, now as you can tell, I'm doing it on this mat. This is a silicone mat that I use in every video of mine and it is, you know, heat resistance. It won't melt. And, uh, you know, I could keep applying hot air to this and nothing will happen below it. What will happen is this thing will warp up and then once it cools down, it comes back to normal. So now I'm going to have to come in at an angle because I just zoomed you guys in slightly. And we just wait for it to heat up here. And it'll just look absolutely beautiful. There we go. Starting to catch. Just the angle that I'm attacking it from isn't the best because the camera is so low. You might want to hold this into place now, just like that. So it currently might be a little bit difficult for you to see, or at least for me on my screen, but that looks pretty good. We could just clean that rest of the stuff off right there, but um, it's in really, really well. Now what I want to do first is actually want to check for shorts. Now I'm going to put my multimeter in a word that I can't pronounce very well, and I'm still practicing on doing it. Continuity, continuity, anyways, the beep mode. So we're going to put it on beep mode to where that'll beep and we want to touch these two together right now so that means it's not shorting out so the resistance should be pretty good and we can go ahead and test the resistance now see if it's 51 ohms here obviously it should be 51 ohms perfect 51 now to check if the resistor has been installed in place and it's not pushed off to the side or anything what you want to do is you'd want to touch this side right here because this pad right here is connected to this side of the resistor and it's going to go the the voltage will go through the resistor and come out this side and touch this first part of the LED. So we're going to touch our multimeter with this side and also this side. And I do see I have 51 ohms of resistance right now. So I know this is installed correctly. And if we go into continuity mode or beep mode, and um, if you touch this and this and it beeps, then you have a short circuit. And I don't recommend installing uh, this inside your quadcopter. So as of the resistor, it's installed correctly. Now we can move along to the LED. Now the LED is going to be pretty tricky because the positive and negative might kind of confuse you here. So I'm just going to take the first three right now. We're going to do the first three together. 
So to know how to install these LEDs, what you'd want to do is you want to actually flip it over here. This is the way that I do it right now. Uh, this is going to be a really easy way to do it. So these three pads for each LED, two of them would be closer together, and then the other two would be separated a bit further. But there's this little line here that kind of uh, makes it difficult to notice. But if you take a look at the bottom of the LED also, what you will see is that you'll see that the middle part here is further away from this edge than it is from this edge. So you follow this pattern. So what we want to do is we actually want to flip it like this. And now this LED we would have to grab and flip like that and put it here. So we would want to flip that over like this. I know it's not the most pleasant way to do it, but that then would be installed right here. So how are we going to do this? Well, it's the same kind of method slash technique. So now we want to grab our little toothpick and we also want to add some solder paste here. And that might be a bit too much. Don't put too much in the middle. Keep it very light because the middle doesn't do anything. It's just going to be more of like a heat sink than anything. And because the middle part is not connected anywhere. And um, what I like to do also is like sometimes I just smear it all over and use the back side of the toothpick as in like an eraser and to erase the lines left over. So that's probably a bit too much also, but it's going to be fine. These really go into place really nicely. So now I'm just going to just draw a little line here, kind of push. So I'm kind of following the left side where I know that where should, there shouldn't be any uh, solder. And there we go. And that looks pretty good. All right. And that's starting to look pretty good. Just had to get a closer look here. Yeah, that's going to look, that's going to do pretty well here. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab the LED. I'm going to flip it to make sure that the far side is going to be up top here. And I'll try to align the edges to the best of my abilities here. And that looks pretty good. So now we're going to go ahead and turn on the hot air gun again. Okay, so my hot air gun should be up to temperature right now. I kind of want to heat up the whole board also. There we go. Now it's, you can see it kind of melting. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera. Just make sure it's good. A couple little pushes. Really nice. All right, so now we have our first LED into place here. Really awesome. It seems to be pretty straight, so I'm very satisfied with that right now. Now, after it's in the place, you really don't want to touch the PCB because it is pretty, pretty darn hot. So now we're going to do all the, the rest of them basically together here. So I'm just going to smear some solder. Now the board is hot, so it's kind of melting or just making it a little bit easier to work with the solder paste here. You can do two ways. You can use your soldering iron now or the hot air gun, but we'll just do it with the hot air gun here. So we're just going to have all of this solder melt into place here. You see how it goes to where it's supposed to be? That's what I really, really love about this one. The solder paste right here. Look at it. It just forms really nicely. But now we see we have some really, really big blobs that we kind of want to get rid of here. We can kind of push those away here. And it'll turn into smaller balls that we can push around. I don't know how it's picking up on the camera now. But if you have an LED already installed into place, it's going to, want to, it's going to get pushed around slightly. There we go. Just make sure this is really nice here. You can see those little balls jumping off. That's a little excess solder over there. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. Now, what was really nice about the uh, solder paste before it melted is that it would hold the part into place, but now it won't hold the part into place. So we're going to have to kind of just be a bit more careful here. Now, also, I've lowered the speed of the fan so it doesn't keep blowing the board all over the place, uh, which could be pretty bad. There we go. And you can see it's really nice. Once it melts, everything just goes into place really nicely. You don't want to keep that on for too long. We're going to push away now. We're going to bring in our second one here. The key here is to be very comfortable of where you're resting your forearms as well. That's very, very important. And 
and to kind of get an idea of the whole process of how this is going to work together. Okay, so those look pretty good. Now I need to grab myself another three LEDs and I guess we'll just do them together. So if I screw up, you guys can see how I go about fixing it. And when you see little balls pop up like, be careful not to touch it. When you see little balls pop up like this, that means there was a bit too much solder. And if you just keep pushing on it, they'll start coming off to the side. All right, so right now I have a 14 volt battery, or 14 volt, I have a 4S battery. And what I'm gonna do is apply a negative voltage here. Now the negative voltage is gonna go through the resistor, go through this, go through this LED, keep going and find its way to its positive here. And the positive is connected right here. And if we touch them, boom, the LED turns on. Really, really nice. Now, if we touch it opposite, in the opposite way, nothing will happen because LEDs are also basically diodes. So a diode only allows voltage to pass through one way and not the other way. And that's what we're seeing here. here. So whenever the motor is spinning, we get a negative voltage on this side here and a positive voltage on this side, then the LED will light up. So it's working off of one phase. Now in a three phase motor, one pad would either be negative, positive or neutral. So, and again, when this is a negative and the middle one is a positive, then we see the LEDs light up here. And this works for just about every single one. Some of them might be a little bit different than others. So this would be a negative here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there we go. This is a really nice red. And you can buy all kinds of colors and stuff. And what's really cool is you can buy a bunch of other colors and you can do whatever you want with this. Now, if you wanted to buy the panels ready-made for you just like this, then I'll have it in the link description called the to buy section. And if you wanted to access the files, then come on, join my Patreon. Help support this channel because you don't only just get giveaways and project files. You also get like secret access and I'm giving a lot of things and I'm also getting more companies to help me give more things back to each and every one of you. So it's win-win situation for everybody so now you can see how it's supposed to look like it's not the cleanest but um, if I use normal soldering then it would look clean but it, that might scare a lot of people so that's why I decided to use solder paste I'll have everything here linked down below from the LEDs to the solder paste I don't think I need to give you toothpicks but yeah I'll have everything you'll need linked down below and go ahead and check them out and well that's it guys I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one peace out